Today we start off with the progress SpaceX is making toward their first Starship Skydive and other super updates, then go over Crew Dragon and Cargo Dragon developments, see what's going on with recent missions and their poor boomsticks that just can't seem to catch a break, look into the heavy October mission manifest, and finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and welcome to this rare Sunday edition of SpaceX in the News. So last time we left off with Starship SN8's imminent move to the launch site. Well, the following day, Elon snapped a close-up of the bird with its wings spread. Very shiny. Those flaps are now directly driven by electric motors with gearbox. No more hydraulics. And of course, those motors are powered by Tesla batteries. Definitely looks more durable than what we saw a year ago with Mark 1 at the Starship presentation. Still, he informed us all that the weld aesthetics will improve greatly in upcoming Starships. By the way, this year's Starship presentation is coming in about three weeks. What will be presented will be what flies to orbit as version 1 with almost no changes. That morning after being placed on a crawler, she was moved two miles down Highway 4 to the launch site, where she said what up to the gatekeeper, passed right on by where it came to a stop at its test slash launch mount. Then on Wednesday morning, it was lifted up and put on the stand where three hydraulic battering rams are on standby to give it a real ramming. That will happen during its upcoming cryo test, currently scheduled for this evening. Last Saturday, Elon wrote its nose cone and front flaps would be implemented next week. That hasn't happened yet, so maybe sometime after cryo or the first of two static fires to follow. SN9 will receive hers sometime in the month of October. It will probably be put through a similar series of tests as SN8, kind of like SN5 and SN6 both doing a 150 meter hop. Elon really wants to get these flights smoothed out to confirm body flaps and header tanks are working well. Then they'll add heat shield tiles and go super high and super fast. Ow! And since our last episode, Elon clarified that this first flight's altitude has been slightly pulled back from 20 clicks to 15. Maybe SN9 will go to 20. And he did finally debrief us on how the SN7.1 proto tank did during its test of failure. She reached 8 bar at the top end where the liquid nitrogen boils off into a gas, pressing on the upper bulkhead, and 9 bar at the bottom where the weight of the LM2 rests. It's enough, but improvements are in the works. 8.5 bar is what is needed for future manned flights. Surprisingly, it turns out the prototank was not made entirely out of 304L. There was some 301 stainless steel in the mix. Where the two met at the top of the tank is where she blew, and it also turns out SN8 is not 100% 304L either. But SN9 will be, or is. SpaceX is making some tweaks to the alloy as we speak. SN9's tank body is now fully stacked. Again, it should be completely finished by the end of the month according to Elon. SN10 has technically begun stacking. And don't forget about the super heavy booster. A new stack of four rings has sleeved the forward methane bulkhead. And a few more additional sections of rings are also on standby for stacking. Over the course of the week, concrete was poured into all six legs of the orbital launch mount from which it will lift off. If you'd like a convenient panoramic view of the launch site and construction yard with labels included so you can better understand the layout of the operation, RGV Aerial Photography put together a nice little video for you, so head on over to their YouTube channel and Patreon to check that out and support their flyovers. In other news, the judge presiding over SpaceX's legal claim against the U.S. Air Force regarding the LSA contracts has ruled against SpaceX concluding that the Air Force's actions were not arbitrary, capricious, or in violation of the law, and that SpaceX was not entitled to any relief in this action. I know, it's a real shocker that a federal court would side with a federal agency. But if you'd still like to know more, make sure your annotations are on and click on the link in the corner above. The rest of us are moving on to Dragon News Meow. On Tuesday, NASA held a press conference for the upcoming Crew-1 mission, where they announced the new date for liftoff on October 31st. Yep, that's Halloween. SpaceX should paint those dragon suits as glow-in-the-dark skeletons. That would be awesome. I went to space! Space, space! Space! Space, space, space! But no tricking or treating for them. Their T-0 time is 2.40 in the morning due to phasing or timing between the vehicle and the ISS. We know that Demo 2 went flawlessly, but SpaceX Vice President of Mission Assurance, Hans, Hans. informed us of a few things that have been improved for the next Dragon mission. The first is the barometric sensor that deployed the chutes. While still in acceptable ranges, Dragon's chutes deployed slightly later than expected. If you'd like to know more about SpaceX chutes, make sure you watch my documentary on the subject. SpaceX is also coordinating with NASA and the Coast Guard to ensure a 10-mile safety perimeter of splashdown. 
But the biggest improvement, and one that the press couldn't stop inquiring about, concerned the heat shield tiles. We found on, on a tile a little bit more erosion than we wanted to see, and um, it had to do with obstructions within the heat shield itself, um, where, the, where the spacecraft is, is mounted to the trunk, basically. In that, in that particular area, we redesigned the, uh, the heat shield tile, and uh, at this point in time, everything has been tested and is ready to go for the next mission. SpaceX also shared with us a new image of CRS-21, the first of the version 2 Cargo Dragon models. Unlike its predecessors, Cargo Dragon 2 is similar to the Crew Dragon capsule and can dock autonomously with the space station. So multiple dragons will soon be calling the ISS their home, thus henceforth I do decree that the ISS be nicknamed the Nest. The Crew 1 astronauts have completed their training, but they'll still be heading into the simulators throughout the month to keep those skills they've acquired from perishing. And unlike Bob and Doug, who named their Dragon capsule Endeavor once they reached orbit, Crew-1 revealed the name of theirs during the press conference. Uh, so without further ado, the, the Crew-1 Dragon capsule number 207 will henceforth be known by the call sign Resilience. And by the way, one of the Japanese astronauts to fly on this mission is also eyeing to fly on Starship around the moon for Dear Moon. SpaceX's Starlink constellation is being utilized by emergency responders helping residents of Malden, Washington rebuild after the wildfires overcame their town. Now, Richard Hall, the head of Washington State's Military Department IT division, was quoted saying he's never set up any tactical satellite equipment that has been so quick to set up and anywhere near as reliable. Elon responded, glad SpaceX could help. We are prioritizing emergency responders and locations with no internet connectivity at all and also reiterated that he doesn't plan on taking Starlink public on the stock market for several years. He wants to make sure such a huge endeavor is sustainable. Guess how many uh, Leo constellations uh, didn't go bankrupt? Zero. So you're focusing on making it work first? Uh, not bankrupt. Right, and not going to. SpaceX's 13th Starlink launch was scrubbed within seconds of liftoff for the second time on Thursday morning. So I'll be on countdown. We've had an abort to an out-of-family ground sensor reading. The first time on Monday was due to poor weather, but it is now scheduled for tomorrow morning at 7.51 a.m. local time. I'll be live for that for those of you who are in need of a viewing buddy. Buddy! During the live stream, we did get to catch a glimpse of the two Falcon 9s at their respected pads, 39A and Slick 40. Inspiring to see, inspiring for the future of space. The other rocket is reserved for the Space Force's GPS-3 mission, which is also suffering some delays with its latest on Friday night, scrubbing at T minus two seconds due to the unexpected pressure rise in the turbo machinery gas generator. Elon wrote they will need to make a lot of improvements to have a chance of completing 48 launches next year. So SpaceX is doing a broad review of launch site, propulsion, structures, avionics, range, and regulatory constraints this weekend. He'll also be at the Cape this week to review hardware in person. But for some good news for future GPS-3 missions, the military and SpaceX has negotiated their contracts to allow the rocket company to use previously flown boosters, a huge step towards saving the U.S. taxpayer $52.7 million. And quick little side note here, ULA's Delta Heavy rocket is also stationed nearby at 37. It too has had tough luck with getting off the ground. Wednesday night, the launch was aborted again, just when things were starting to heat up. SpaceX landed their third consecutive NASA contract this week. They will launch the Interstellar Mapping and Acceleration Probe, which will help researchers better understand the boundary of the heliosphere, a magnetic barrier surrounding our solar system. And a new secretive filing has been submitted to the FCC by SpaceX for a launch no earlier than October. But all we know for sure at the moment is that it's for an experimental recovery to the launch site. It may be an unannounced mission. SpaceX has done one for the government with Zuma back in January of 2018. It was a classified satellite that was unofficially reported to have burned up over the Indian Ocean after it failed to separate from Northrop Grumman's payload adapter. And if that's actually true, it's possible that this could be their second attempt but it's all speculation. Shh. Just go ahead. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. The first company to 3D print a home in the United States is being funded by NASA to design and build an off-world construction system. Based out of Austin, Texas, Icon is a construction technology company working with two architecture firms for Project Olympus an attempt to innovate a way to build a moon base for the Artemis program. 
that will be able to withstand the harsh environment of space that includes 500 degree temperature variations, craters, high levels of radiation, and sticky moon dust. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in and shout out to my eccentric members and patrons who support the making of these videos. Want more SpaceX news in your week? Check out the description below for links to my Patreon and YouTube membership page. And while you're down there, please don't forget to support your local SpaceX photographers. Do have a nominal week. Hope to see you back here in the morning for the next attempt of Starlink. And until that time, Godspeed. <laughs>